Would you join me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Embarking to the choir, The Power of Radical Kinship, Jesuit priest Father Greg Boyle tells the story of Jose, one of the street gang members who came to Homeboy Industries in Los Angeles. Jose was a trainee and had been with Homeboy Industries for just a short time when Father Boyle, affectionately known to everybody there as G, as G went to him and asked him to join him on a speaking engagement. And so he said yes and went along and G went to this place with 600 social workers and Jose. And Jose shared his story, a story that G had truthfully never heard before. Jose began, my mom and me didn't get along so good. When I was six years old, she said to me, why don't you just kill yourself? You're such a burden to me. As Jose stopped and the room was just filled with a compassionate gasp, Jose looked at them and said, don't worry, it sounds much worse in Spanish. <laughs> the same happened and he had them as he went on. He told how his mother would beat him constantly, and when he was nine, she drove him into the Baja Desert and dropped him off at an orphanage, saying that she had found this boy along the road. He was there for six months until his grandmother was finally able to find out where he was from asking her daughter day in and day out, and grandma came and brought him home. When he returned, the beatings began again. He continued, my mother beat me every day, every single day. It was so bad that I wore three t-shirts to school each day, the first one to seep up the blood, the second one to catch any blood that might seep through, and the third one, well, just so I'd have a t-shirt on. And you couldn't see the blood on that one. The kids made fun of me because I was wearing three t-shirts, sometimes in 100 degree heat, but I didn't care. I had to. Then he paused to catch his breath through his tears, and he continued, I wore three t-shirts well into my adult years because I was ashamed of my wounds. All my scars, I didn't want anyone to see them. And then one day, I came to realize that my wounds were my friends. After all, how can I help the wounded if I can't heal my own wounds? I learned that my own compassion for others lies in this, that if you don't welcome your own wounds, you may be tempted to despise and hate others who are wounded. In his 2021 book, the whole language, the power of extravagant tenderness, Father Boyle continues to tell the story of his lifetime work at Homeboy Industries. He calls all of us to speak and live the whole language of God, which means we need to embrace the power of extravagant tenderness. Tenderness, he says, is the highest form of spiritual fluency. In our tenderness, we go to the margins, and meet people in their woundedness. In our tenderness, we get to stand with the demonized, so the demonizing will stop, because you can't demonize people you know. In our tenderness, we, present with, we, we, we are present with the disposable, so that they will no longer be thrown away, because you can't throw away somebody you know. And when you go into the margins, you'll find other voices are getting up to be heard as well. If it's the traumatized person they, who we believe are, is more likely to find ways to traumatize others, it is equally true that in the margins, you will find cherished persons who are able to find their way to cherish themselves and cherish others. Father Boyle tells the story 
of an experience that he had with Father Henry Nowen, which happened years ago when they were both at Harvard Divinity School. Father Nowen was asked by somebody in the room, what is ministry? And Henry Nowen paused for some time and then responded, can you receive people? Can you receive people? You see, each of us is called to ministry wherever we are, whoever we are, however we are. Each of us gets to answer in our own ways and in our own places, can I receive people? And we will find in living fully into the tenderness of God that we will experience God's comfort. And as, as Father Boyle points out, as God comforts us, there's no time or place left for judgment. It reminds me very much of something Mother Teresa said, when we empty ourselves of everything we carry, it allows for God's love to fill those places that are now empty. It's in that place that we can receive people. Years ago, one of the, my favorite comments, although he's said so many things through the years by Congressman John Lewis was, you know, we all live in the same house. I always love that because in that house, Congressman Lewis would go on to explain that none of us are assigned to certain rooms in the house. We don't have to stay in the basement or in the attic. We don't have to you know, spend all our time in the kitchen. It's our house, right? We all live where we want to be in that house. He said, no one assigns us anything, so we're in the house together, right? If we think of it this way, that means we all come to the table together. We sit at the table together. We receive God's blessings in the house together. We are all meeting Jesus there together. And we find that when we do that, Jesus shows up again and again, and he shows us what really matters. He shows us that inclusion really matters, that nonviolence really makes a difference and matters, that unconditional love really matters, and that compassionate acceptance of one another really matters. These four elements of what Jesus is all about, inclusion, nonviolence, unconditional love, compassionate acceptance, all connect us to tenderness. You see, getting to tenderness can be really hard. It can be especially hard when we're stressed out, when we're closed off, when we're fearful. Think about this. We can't make room for tenderness when we're trying to get something or protect something. We all struggle with this one. We have to be open to get tenderness. In our scripture today, the prophet cries out, how long, O Lord, and why don't you intervene, God? How many times have we joined Habakkuk in this desperate lament? In the midst of his lament, God calls Habakkuk to answer for himself. He says, set forth a vision and then run to it, Habakkuk. Moving toward that vision means lament will become quieter and praise will become greater. Habakkuk leads us right into Jesus' entreaty to the disciples. Lord, increase our faith, they say. That's a great request because we all believe that we need more faith, right? It's a great request. Jesus gives a really strange answer. It's like, I, I've read it many times and I'm trying to figure out how he's putting this all together. But what they're really requesting is that he would help them to be better at being disciples, right? To be better at loving, to be better at grace and greater in fidelity. Jesus, in his immense tenderness, wants them to have greater faith, a faith that spreads. So we often think of the mustard seed as the smallest seed, and so we talk about faith that small can grow. But let's remember how that mustard seed grows. It grows into bushes and trees and just keeps growing and growing and growing. So Jesus is telling his disciples, you're not supposed to stop before you've completed everything. Faith is always a noun, uh, it's not a noun, it's, it's always a verb. He wants their faith to grow and grow and grow and grow and be active. And then finally today we're blessed with 1 Timothy in which Paul tells Timothy, stir into the flame the gift that God has given you, stir it in. And then he goes on, give God uh, all that God needs. In this, you know that God has given you so much, not a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and love and self-control. So again, God is calling us to run with the blessings that are given, to step into them, to not run away from them. Today's readings are telling us that this act of being very impatient 
and passionate at times is our own way of trying to get God's attention. And God gets our attention by giving us a small seed of hope that says you can grow into this if you just give yourself to it. Perhaps the very powerful, uh, powerful thing that is growing in us, that small seed is the power of tenderness. I want us to think about that. May tenderness grow like the mustard seed within each of us. And like Jose, may our wounds become our friends. And may they guide us to embrace those around us who are wounded too. May we all this day and forever be seized by tenderness. Amen.